In this video, you're going to learn about whether to use a sine equation or a cosine equation when you're describing a sinusoidal graph. So let's talk about some examples here. This first example, you can see they give us a sinusoidal graph. What's a sinusoidal graph? Well, it's basically, you know, this S-shaped graph. And this question that students always ask is, you know, do I use a sine equation or a cosine equation? And I'm here to tell you that you can use either one. Now, the next question will say, well, do I use a positive A value or a negative A value? And again, the question is, uh, the answer is you can use either one. And I'll show you how to write these equations several different ways. The first thing that I would do is I would sketch in this midline. Now, I, when I say midline, what that means is, you know, it's the line that essentially splits this graph in half. You've got half is above and half is below. That'll help you a little bit when you're doing this problem because what this um, midline tells us is what the vertical shift is. In this case, the graph is shifting down too. So no matter what equation that we write, it's always gonna have a K value or a vertical shift of negative two. So we got that out of the way. Now the next thing is the amplitude and the amplitude is referring to you know how high the waves are. But remember when you measure the amplitude, you're always measuring from this midline, okay? So the amplitude itself is always positive. If it's negative, what that means is it's reflecting it over the x-axis. So you can see this amplitude here is just a height of one, one. So we know our A value is one. Now the question is, do we want to use a sine graph or a cosine graph? Well, again, that has to do with what you want to think of as your starting point. You want to know your basic sine and cosine graphs. So I'm just going to sketch them right here so you can see this. Sine, normally we think of as starting here at the origin and then it goes up and then back to zero and down and back up like that, right? So that's the basic sine graph. Whereas a cosine graph starts at the maximum, goes through the zero, the minimum, back to the maximum like that. They both have a period of two pi. And what we wanna do is we wanna calculate what the period is for this particular graph. Now to get from, let's say this point to where then it starts over and repeats again, that's giving us a distance of four pi, okay, five pi minus one pi, four pi till it repeats. The other way to do it is you can measure from peak to peak or from valley to valley. So this is still giving us four pi, this is still giving us four pi. So in this case, let's go ahead and calculate what this B value is. And the formula for this is the period is equal to two pi divided by B, or you could say B is equal to two pi divided by the period. In this case, the period we set is four pi. So if we reduce, you can see that B is equal to one half. So in any of these equations that we're gonna be writing here, we're gonna have the same basic format. We're gonna have amplitude is one, B is one half, the vertical shift is negative two. But then what we wanna analyze is, okay, are we gonna use a sine or a cosine? Let's maybe start with a cosine graph. Now you see this cosine graph down here? If I was to reflect it over the x-axis, then it would be over here, right? And it would look something like this dotted line that I'm drawing right now, which looks a lot like the graph that we have here, right? So I'm gonna make this a negative one cosine one half x, okay? Now it hasn't shifted left or right, so my h value is just gonna be zero. I'm just gonna leave it like that. The only thing that's differing between all these equations that we're gonna be writing is the a value, whether it's positive or negative, and the phase shift, which is the left and right, the horizontal shift. Okay, so that's one possible answer here, right? The next one is, let's maybe take a sine graph now. So we're gonna say sine, we still have the one half, we still have the negative two. Now remember, sine starts here at the origin and it goes up and then down and back up. So you can see this would be like a starting point, but what's happening is it's shifting to the right, pi. So when we shift to the right, that's gonna be minus pi. Remember the one that's grouped with the x has the opposite effect on the graph. Minus pi is actually shifting right pi, plus pi is shifting left pi, okay? And then the other question is, is that has it been reflected or not? Well, this one hasn't been reflected. You can see it's the same shape as this graph here. It's just being shifted right. So that means the amplitude is just gonna be one. It's not being, gonna be multiplied by a negative. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Let's maybe say, for example, we wanna do a, a sine graph, but we wanna make it a negative amplitude this time. Okay, so all this information here is staying the same. The only thing that's changing is the fact that this is going to be a negative, so it's reflecting over the x-axis. So where does that uh, look like? Well, that looks something like it's starting here now, right? Okay, and it's going down, back up, and like that. So that means now it's being shifted to the left pi, which means that this is actually going to be the opposite plus pi. Okay, remember the one group with x is the opposite effect on the graph. And let's do maybe a 
a cosine graph, and we'll just make this a positive one this time. The B value is the same. The vertical shift is the same. But now let's see, so if we do a positive cosine, now cosine you can see starts over here at the max, okay? So we could either use this point here, or we could use this point here. Doesn't really matter, there's an infinite number of ways to write this equation for this graph. It's just a matter of how far you wanna shift it left and right, whether you wanna use sine or cosine, and whether you want it to be a multiplied by a negative one, meaning it's reflecting. So let's just go ahead and use this point over here. So that means it's shifting to the left, two pi, which means that this is gonna be plus two pi. So any one of these would be the correct answer. How do you know which one to use? Well, if your teacher specifies that it has to be a cosine graph, you'd wanna use one of those two. If it's a sine graph, one of those two. But make it easier on yourself. You don't wanna be shifting the graph way over here and then way over here. Try to pick something that's close. Ideally, you might not have to shift it at all. And that's what I did in this first example. I thought that was the easiest, was just to think of it as a cosine graph that has only been shifted down, but it was reflected over the x-axis first. So I hope this helped you understand how to work with you know, writing an equation, a sine or cosine equation given a graph. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.